everyone, uh, we want to show you this really cool hack um, using Task Magic. You can essentially automate chat GPT usage. And since you can use unlimited or practically unlimited um, prompts and usage and copy pasting from that site, if you have access to that site, we're going to show you how you can use that with Task Magic to automate content, things like that. Um, and essentially get AP or get website usage unlimited on chat GPT um, with no API costs because using their API costs um, money. So as I get ready for bed, <laughs> this late night update to bring you um, this awesome thing. So we'll let Kyle explain a little bit. Watch. <laughs> Hey everyone, so we are going to build a quick automation today using the manual recorder because it'll be a, a really simple kind of clicking and typing process. And what we're going to turn that into is going to ChatGPT and requesting some sort of response from it, pasting some message, it'll respond, we're going to scrape that and then send that to Google Sheets or Webhook, whatever we want to do. So. Uh, in Task Magic, I'm going to go ahead and click Add New Automation, and then I'm going to scroll down to Manual Recording. Um, you can do this in the guided method, but this is going to be really fast, just kind of click, type, click, type. Uh, so I think the Manual Recording is a really good option for this. So I'll click chat, or I'm sorry, I'll go to chat.openai.com. You're not going to see that recorded as a step, and the reason is is because whatever uh, whatever URL the first step takes place on, we know we need to go to that URL. So you don't need to add that as a step. Um, obviously, there's no point of going to a URL and doing absolutely nothing. So that's going to be recorded for you and is usually handled automatically for you. Um, but anyways, our first step, we're going to click login. It doesn't matter if we click inside or out. It's just a preference thing. It matters more with scraping. And then I'm going to go ahead and type my email. Again, just typing. Nothing else, just typing through this. Um, and then I'm going to type my password and click continue. Just click type, click type. Really simple process here. And then I'm going to click OK, let's go. Again, doesn't matter if you click the outside or the inside. Same difference. Um, and then we are going to type our message. We don't need to be particular with our message right now. This doesn't matter as much. Um, we're going to edit that afterwards when we want to add our variables and all that. I just enjoy doing that in the builder side or when there's a bigger view a little bit more. Uh, but here I'm just going to say, oops, I'm going to click in here and then say hello. And then I'll just click enter on my keyboard. And then there's two things we want to do here and they, they matter for basically this automation to be more successful for us. Um, but what we're going to do is we are going to add a scrape text step and we are going to scrape this regenerate text. And the reason is, is because we want to make sure that we're always giving it enough time to respond um, that we don't want it to. Uh, I don't want to scrape before it's done responding. So we want to click scrape text and then we need to we can move this up Ooh. or we can minimize this. And I'm going to scrape the regenerate text right here. And then that is so that we can make a, we can use filter to make a comparison to decide if we need to wait or not, which I'll set up after we do this. And then the last step is going to be adding in another scrape text and that's getting the response from chat GPT. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then that is going to be all for the automation. So this one right here is check if done. I'm just going to name them really quick for us to follow along in the video. Um, this is where we are checking the regenerate or the stop generating text. And then this is getting the response just again for us to know what step is what I'm going to label some of these. We'll make this send message. And these are all this is all the login stuff. This doesn't matter as much. Uh, what we really care about are really these four steps right here, which is typing, sending, checking if done, and then getting the response. So to set up this filter, what we want to do is we want to have a continuous check to see if the message has, uh, has finished being written. So I'm going to add a delay after this enter step for, let's just do like 0.1. So it's a really, it's just like six seconds, I think, if I'm right. Yeah, six seconds. And then we have this check if done scrape step that's going to be done. 
Um, again, this is a scrape. I'll just add that in here so that we have, again, clarification on that. And then right here, um, it, step 12 is getting the response. We're going to add a filter, and that filter is going to check if step 11 includes, um, I think we could do, we'll do stop is probably good. Uh, again, it's going to force everything lowercase, so we don't need to mat we don't need to worry about if this is uppercase or lowercase. But if step eleven includes stop, then we want to. I don't remember what the step is. I'll need to check after. I'm just going to select step nine for now, um, and then we'll click save step because if it does, uh, if it does not include that, we just want to continue. Uh, so we don't need to change this at all. And then I forgot what I needed to edit. Um, right here, we're going to check. So if step 11 includes, um, that shouldn't say go to, I'm going to leave this in the video, but I'm going to fix that. So if step 11 includes the value stop, then we want to go back up to this delay so that we can wait another six seconds, check again, and then continue this loop. Now, when it finally doesn't say stop anymore, it's going to continue past this filter and scrape the response. So I'm going to edit this to be step nine, step 10. So now what this is going to do is it'll check this. And then if it has stop, it'll go back up to step 10 and continue to repeat this waiting six seconds each time. So now what we can do is I'm going to set up, let's actually, let's turn this into writing multiple blog posts. Um, I'm just going to add in a second loop for you guys to have a visual on that. Uh, we are going to set up trigger and then use the loop trigger. And then we want to add Google data. So I'm going to paste my spreadsheet URL. This spreadsheet also needs to be shared with automations at taskmagic.com. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I am going to capture this URL, go to the TaskMagic app and paste that, and then select the sheet one worksheet. And these are my variables. So we want to start at row two, and then let's just say we want to loop like five rows at a time, but I don't have five rows, so I'll just make it two. Um, we can let's say we want to run this hourly. We don't need. We can edit that as we want. Um, now what matters is setting up this loop. So we have, we want to resume this loop right here at this type step. We don't want to repeat all of these login steps every single time. So we want to make sure that every time a new row gets started, it's starting from step eight. Actually, uh, this way, okay, so one thing I'm going to do is because we kind of turn this into a last minute uh, looping one, this is my concern is if we type a message and then we scrape the response and then we type another message, it's this is now a different part of the page. So it's going to scrape this same spot. But what we can do to fix that is we could just reload the page. So what I'll do is, is after we scrape the response, let's add a URL step and let's make it chat.openai.com. And now what this will do, we need to edit our loop up here. Sorry. What this is going to do is it'll go through the login process and then it's going to enter a it enter some message based on the variables that we have, which I'll set up in a second. Then it's going to hit enter on the keyboard and then it's going to wait six seconds. Check if we have a response, check if the message is done being typed from chat GPT uh, in this filter step. And then if it isn't done, it's going to re restart the delay. Um, if it is, it's going to continue by getting the response and then it's going to change. It's going to change to a new URL, which is just reloading the page for us. Um, there's different ways we can do this. You could edit the message. You can edit the X path of the, or the selectors if you want to be able to specify this. Uh, but this is going to be the easiest and fastest way. So now to set up my message, I'm going to edit this type step and I'm going to say, you know, I don't know the I don't know the current prompt expectations, but it's going to be write a blog post. And then I'm going to say title. Oops, I need to fix that. I added to the beginning. It's going to stay in the video though. That's okay. And then here is the description. And then I'll just type description out since that isn't functioning properly. And then I'm going to say, focus on these keywords in your response. Um, and then I'll hit enter. Cool. 
So even though it doesn't appear formatted here, it's okay. Um, that's all gonna be removed when it's being displayed so that your page isn't extended all the way down. But this is all the automation needs to be. Um, it'll read in that data from Google Sheet, and then it is going to uh, loop through each new row by typing in that column, sending the message, waiting for the response, scraping the response, resetting the page, and then resuming the next row. So to demonstrate it running, I'll go ahead and click play steps. And what we're going to see is it's going to, it might log into my account, it might already have the login cached. Um, regardless, it'll go through those steps and then it is going to start a new chat and paste whatever text I had and uh, we'll wait for a response. All right, so now it should find the message inbox and then we are going to see it paste the text and the variable data and then we will be waiting for a response. So there's everything that I wanted it to paste. And then we are going to check this button to make sure that we're done generating text and that's that filter that we are going through. Um, it was pretty fast this time, so we might not even need that filter in this scenario, but it's a good thing to have because we all know when ChatGPT takes a few minutes to respond. So, it looks like step 12, so it's getting the response now. It should scrape this, this entire box right here. And then... There's the filter going, and there's the scrape going. So I was off by a step or two. And then it is gonna start the next loop, uh, but we'll see that the data was already scraped. So this is it, you don't need to worry about this column, this is just for our filter, but we'll see here that I have the entire blog post in this section. Um, obviously a really small height, but that is the blog post that was scraped. And then it looks like it's about to do its second row. Um, I have the same blog post as you guys can see in the Google Sheet. I don't remember if I already showed that, but I have a bunch of duplicate rows so that I could test this. Again, we're going to be waiting for the response. I don't know how long of a delay I have here. Almost half a minute. That's probably why. This could be like 0.1, especially with us having a filter set up. If you don't want to bother with a filter, set this to whatever you want to make sure it's safe and then you'll be good to go. So this is going to grab this next one. The reason I'm also resetting the window each time is because if we scrape this text right here and then we paste another message and it responds again, it's still going to scrape this first one unless we modify the selectors a little bit. Um, it's going to be a lot easier if we're kind of resetting this view so that we have a, a guaranteed clean slate. But we'll see that it was scraped two times. Um, it looks like ChatGPT gave it another version this time around. But this is what we can set up sending to our Google Sheet, which I'll demonstrate quickly in case you guys haven't been through that process. Um, let me pull up the... So here's all the duplicate data that I had. Um, and then we are going to set up this export column. The headers in your export column or in your export sheet don't really matter. Um, if you want to just put one, that's okay. Even if you have 20 columns of data, it'll still paste it all. It just requires that we have something here. So when I go to send to Google Sheets, I can paste that URL, select the worksheet, and then click looks good, and we are good to go. So next time I run, this data would have been pasted to Google Sheets the exact same way. Um, that is displayed here and we can continue looping this as long as we want with as much data as we want even if it has to re-perform this scrape step because of the filter it's going to continuously overwrite whatever was right not right there sorry whatever is right here so if it checks this filter four different times it's not going to create four different rows it's going to just replace this same one every single time the next loop is going to start the next row for you so hope that was uh, exciting for you guys to see some possibilities with ChatGPT. Um, theoretically, should make things pretty endless with what you can do. So excited to see what you build. Uh, leave some comments with what you're after.